I'm not here really to pick holes in IPCC, but I'm just giving you a flavor of what an ordinary person with only university knowledge of statistics and science and methodology have already come across. So God knows who else who is much more erudite than me would find. But I am annoyed, ladies and gentlemen, that I am being told every day that we are going to die tomorrow if we don't save the world from an environmental point of view and specifically with regard to CO2 emissions. I know I will struck down my lightning or somebody's going to throw a tomato at me in a minute, but I will be quick in finishing. I just hope that whatever sustainable program you come up with, and I'm all for it, if you find market initiatives, winning policies, fine. Go and make more money. I'm all for it. I'm a great capitalist. But I don't, just don't think the world works like that. Um, I just hope that all of you will look at it from a global point of view. And the, 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 answer, the, the question is not as simple as global warming. In fact, the causation, the direct causation between global warming and climate change which now people say is unimpeachable or based on unimpeachable science. I'm going to prove to you in one minute is not true. One minute. And when people tell me that there's no self-respecting scientist who disagrees with that, well, that might be a danger in itself. Do you remember Galileo? Every scientist of his time thought, that he was wrong in believing that the, earth was, that the earth was round. They burnt him, or nearly burnt him, on the stakes. So I'm not so sure, even at that extremist, when everybody seems to have disagreed. Uh, agreed. And you know, the world isn't as simple as that. I just wish more people would come up and articulate the problem more so that we are not always talking about Kyoto, about COT, CO2 emissions. We ought to do much more about other things. Of course we have alternative uh, energy uh, resources and so forth, but they're not, they're not simple. I mean, wind energy, well, just imagine the, num uh, the amount of energy that goes into making those turbines. They're killing the birds as well. WWF should know. Uh, it's not very environmentally, environmentally friendly. The biofuel, they're, 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 they're now <laughs> feeding the cars with, with, uh, with, with crops, which should really go and feed on people. 800 million of them are starving. And, you know, today, for the first time, there are as many people living in the urban area as rural area, for the first time in history. And we're eating so much more meat. We've got to address these issues. So, it's not just CO2 emissions. I'm all for it. I mean, if you want to... Lower it. I will try my best to lower mine, and Sweden does its best. Although I have to tell you, yesterday I arrived at 11.30, I went past nine construction sites. Nobody on it, and all the light bulbs on. <laughs> I was going to ask the Deputy Prime Minister about that, but I thought uh, I'd ask that after she has gone. Now, <laughs> I will now show you, and incidentally, about Solar panel, you saw Dr. Xi, Dr. Xi is a great friend of mine. He makes all his money sometimes, I'm afraid, selling things to the West. That's another point. Not China, you ask him. 10%, 5%, if that, use the solar panels. Of course it's a matter of education. So don't get me wrong, I'm all for it. But it's not just that. It's not just CO2 emissions reductions in your face. Now I will show you Something I learned in logic that will take two minutes and I believe underlines the entire argument behind global warming and climate change. It's very simple. Everybody knows in logic if P then Q. I better do it more properly. Sorry. If P, then Q. So P implies Q. Okay? Very simple. So, logically, 
sorry, it's possibly another line. I don't know how to move it. But anyway, just going off there. Right, give me a new page. It's not very good technology. Anyway, look, I'll tell you. It's very simple. P implies Q. You don't need to be Einstein. Not Q implies not P. All right? If you accept that P implies Q, then not Q implies not Q. Now think of the propositions that all ravens are black. So if, you are ra if, if something is a raven, then it's black. If P is a raven, Q is black. If it's not black, it's not a raven. Very simple. Okay? Now, my red ribbon is not black. And indeed, it is not a raven. Now, the question is this. There seems to be a paradox. How could my red ribbon confirm the hypothesis that all ravens are black? It seems to be a manifest absurdity. But it's not. If you knew how to do statistics and you know the name Bayes, Bayes' theorem, because this red ribbon is one instant of confirmation of the hypothesis that all ravens are black. Because in order to prove the hypothesis all ravens are black, you go around the world and you make sure that none of the black things is a raven. I promise you there is no trick in it. It comes from the highest authority called Aristotle. All right? You can go and test your logician professors. All right? Now, my point is this. It does confirm it, but by how much? And the answer is tiny, tiny, tiny. In conclusion, I say to you, I don't even have to disbelieve that global warming brings about climate change. But what I am saying to you is that, that is not the issue. The issue is by how much. Because if I was a scientist, the first thing I know, I want to know, is by how much. And if CO2 is 30% of the problem of the greenhouse gas emission, then I have a quantum in my mind as to how much I need to reduce. How dare, how arrogant we are in believing that actually we understand nature. Nature is so fantastic that we couldn't possibly imagine what other factors could be involved. The time, uh, it was this mentioned this morning, I really liked Mr. Bigman until he mentioned that the cyclone is being probably provable. I mean, if that was the case, then anything that happened, that, if that was the case, then how could anybody at the beginning of the Little Ice Age that happened 400 years ago explain the sudden freezing up of the Thames? So, you've raised um, very interesting points, and I think very valid points. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs>